What's up ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dan from Nintendo Life. Welcome to Required Reading, where I show you some pieces of gaming literature that I've come across throughout my years in this gaming landscape. So while of course Alex has been keeping busy, I personally have been going back and playing some of the Zelda games that I unfortunately missed out on. One of the more notable entries that I grievously missed was the fan favorite, a link to the past. Link to the Past was the premiere of the Zelda series on the Super Nintendo, released April 13th of 1992 in the States, or September 24th, 1992, if you're from Europe. Regardless, the third entry of the Zelda saga was one that would anticipate and define the shaping of many gamers' opinions in regards to quality Zelda games, going on to be one of the best-selling titles in the franchise. I decided to play the title on my new Nintendo 3DS via the Virtual Console, making progress on my commute almost every single day until I finished it. However, before starting the game I decided to scrounge up a few books that I had laying around just for the occasion that I would eventually play A Link to the Past. The first and most notable of which is the Nintendo Player's Guide, an official guide published by Nintendo and almost completely in-house as well. Now, of course, growing up in the age of game facts and YouTube walkthroughs, these physical guides have mostly remained a mystery to me except, say, for the novelty of collecting them as they look really nice on your shelf and they usually have some pretty nice art in them. I decided to keep it close not only for the novelty, but also because I, well, the Zelda games are a little complex. They have some really, really intricate puzzles. There's some temples that are very, very hard to come across what exactly your objective is. So I decided to keep this guide around just in case I got a little lost and didn't want to hinder my experience of the game overall. What I'm basically saying is I'm not cheating. I wouldn't cheat. That's not what I'm doing. Just, I just have a, there's a, small amount of time on this earth. You gotta spend it doing what is important. And what is important to me is progression, so that's why I decided to pick this up. However, another thing I didn't expect was that the Link to the Past Nintendo Guide would be one of the most valuable assets to having me enjoy the game and understand why it's such a renowned Zelda classic. What I began to realize when I first opened this guide was that it wasn't really a guide at all, or at least in the traditional sense that I'm more used to. None of it is linear. The book touts itself to be a giant encyclopedia. It says so right on the back. It says that it's packed with maps, items, weapons, tactics, and more. But I feel like this is underselling it. The fact that this guide merely encapsulated most of my information of the story, the lore, and the world itself just discredits the fact that, oh, it has all the items and you know where all the keys are now, or some vague hints of where the heart pieces are. But if I haven't pointed out before, the book is full of impressive illustrations and there's some really, really nuanced world building that's adherent to the writing of whoever decided to write this guide. To come up with an example, there was a moment when I was exploring the overworld of A Link to the Past and was wondering if there were any sort of side destinations that I could come across of. I scoured over the guide and eventually I found out that there was a fortune teller shop. I knew that I needed to go to the Lost Woods to find it, but not because of the guide itself, but rather a piece of flavor text that was hidden within it. A fortune teller lived in a quaint cottage near one entrance to the Lost Woods. For a price, he would stare into a crystal ball to predict the futures of travelers who stopped in. Some people took his prediction seriously and visited him regularly, but others felt that they had wasted their time and money, vowing to never return. Neat, right? It's these added nuances of world building that allowed me to enjoy the game probably in a very unique way compared to others. It was these tiny little details that allowed me to enjoy A Link to the Past much more than other Zelda games. A Link to the Past's Hyrule is relatively small compared to later Zelda games, but what I didn't realize was that these flavor texts were allowing me to experience a Hyrule that was seemingly bigger and full of life. But you may also notice that underneath the airy art depicting the fortune teller, there's another juxtaposing his exact description. The fortune tellers of Hyrule inherited the ability to foretell the future from their ancestors. Some said that the tellers themselves were specifically gifted, 
Others thought that the real magic was in the crystal balls. It was true that the rare and beautiful crystal balls were handed down from generation to generation, but others who tried to see images in them saw nothing short of their own reflections. Who wrote this? Nobody needed to write this. Nobody needed to put that much effort behind the fortune teller in A Link to the Past. It's awesome. This doesn't deserve to be here. It needs its own dedicated lore channel on YouTube. It has game explain levels of critical thinking in terms of expounding these small ideas and creating a lore and narrative around it. One passage gives us a vague and creative way to tell us what this random house in Hyrule's purpose seemingly is without explaitively telling it to us. Alone, this is already a lot of effort to explain what is probably a house in the game that you'll probably never visit more than once. The other, however, drives home exactly what this character and shop means for the narrative of A Link to the Past as a whole. Now, I could have hopped into the fortune teller's shop and felt cheated out of my rupees after I gave him some. Or I could have learned much more based on the various hints and contextualizations within the guide. This allowed me to feel for a character that should have otherwise been a throwaway character and had nothing written about him for years to come, save for a few mentions and a couple retrospectives. With this extra exposition that fleshes out the world of Hyrule, an artifographical description of each item in the game, and hints to nudge me into side quests I never would have discovered on my own, the Nintendo Player's Guide for A Link to the Past is a must-have if you're going to be traversing the light and dark world of A Link to the Past, or seemingly revisiting it. Making me feel much more inquisitive, the guide goes mostly unnoticed even though it has such incredible layers of detail and effort. Prices for the book are astronomical over at Amazon, but fret not, archive.org has a great scan of the guide which you can peruse to your heart's content. Once finishing A Link to the Past, I decided to go out and find some graphic novels and some manga relating around A Link to the Past, and surprisingly, there's two of them, actually. These are many other items that enhance my enjoyment of the game well after I had finished it. There's this absolutely awesome graphic novel which was featured in Nintendo Power, with art spectacularly executed by Shotaro Ishinimori. And equally, the Link to the Past manga presents the story in a much more contextualized manner that brings about my favorite version of Link. Both of these are published by Viz Media and can be ordered on Amazon, and I could talk about these for a while, but I think we're gonna save them for another video. Even if you don't find usage out of the supplements I provided, I sound like a doctor, what's wrong with me? Please, if you have a chance, replay A Link to the Past before the Breath of the Wild comes out. It's the Zelda entry that ace to format all future Zelda games have merely been trying to copy. What's your favorite piece of gaming literature? I'll look it up and see if we could possibly make a video about it. If you like this video or my shoddy American accent, then go ahead and leave a like down below so Alex doesn't doesn't fire me after after my after my first after my first video. You think maybe I was a little bit too insensitive about British people? And also, hit that subscribe button down there so you get a bunch of Nintendo Switch content which is coming, coming real soon. Coming real soon. Hope embargo's up. Hope embargo's up because The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild takes place on the moon. Also, check out NintendoLife.com for a bevy of Nintendo content. Thank you again for watching. My name is Dan Thompson. You can find me on Twitter at ShadowForks. Have a great rest of your day. May your Goomba stomps be ground pound. I got. I gotta think of a. I gotta think of an outro. May your Goomba stomps be ground pounds. Have a nice day. Oh, wow.